Hey guys, Phil here. Hope you're all well. Yeah, that's my real name. I thought I'd use my real name for once. <laughs> um, what you're looking in front of you is a Sega Mega Drive. Um, this is a different model. As you can see, it's the high definition graphic stereo sound model. Um, I got this site from eBay. Uh, it was sold as faulty. Um, as you can see, <laughs> there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, it was just a dirty cartridge slot and clean a cartridge slot and it works perfectly fine um, I've already done a switched version of the Mega Drive so what I'm deciding now is I'll, I'll show you how to do a switchless uh, and I'm going to do it on this console I've already carried out a couple of mods on this console if I power the system off I've already widened the cartridge slot and I've also C-Sync modded it as well so you know if you want to go and check that how I did that to the Mega Drive you can go and have a look at my previous videos but yeah this Mega Drive it's a keeper it's a switchless version um, and that's how I decide whether to do a switched version or a switchless version if the Mega Drive is in really good shape like this one I'll switchless it um, if it's a bit beat up and a bit raggedy looking, I'll, I'll add switches to it. Um, so, yeah, this is what I'm going to do with this console, guys. It's a switchless version, so uh, give me a couple of minutes to set up and I'll get on with that. I just want to show you the components that you're going to need if you're going to do this. Um, some of this is optional, you don't really need to do this, but I'm just showing you the way I do it um, a bit of Vero board nothing special 8 holes high, 9 holes across cut it out in this pattern um, and that basically allows me to put the components on there without them shorting or anything like that um, what I'll do later on is I'll show you a picture of how to cut this uh, board out give you the dimensions um, you're going to need a 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor that's just to smooth the rail out the void uh, the power rail just in case there's any ripple on there you're going to need a dual LED preferably green and red uh, and it has to be center common so the red plus and the green plus is on the outsides and the common is in the center you're going to need two 220 ohm resistors uh, you're going to need a 16 F630 pick chip uh, for the code and you're going to need a dim socket to put the pick chip in now the reason I use a socket to put the uh, pick chip in is you know a lot of people dead bug it where they just basically solder directly to the chip that's all well and good but if the guy decides one day okay I'm going to update the code uh, you're pretty much screwed. Um, you've got to get a new chip and then do it all over again. Where with this, if he does decide to change the code, I can just take the chip out, reprogram it, pop it back in, everyone's a winner. So, uh, yeah, these are the components you're going to need. Okay guys, I've got a little bit of a tip for you. As you can see, I'm about to solder on my DIM socket. Um, but a lot of the problems people have when they come to working with their board is they'll start soldering and you know all the solder will go all over the place and it'll just look horrible. So here's a tip for you. What you do is you get a bit of captain tape and you just cover up the holes you don't want to solder. And then all you have to do is, I'll see if I can do this, is
Now if I take off the captain tape, as you can see, stop me going into the next hole adjacent. And I'm done. All soldered in. As you can probably tell I'm using a quick connect method like I did in my switch version of the Mega Drive. That just makes things easier to repair if something goes wrong. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just talk you through the connections you can see. Um, the first one, this one here, is plus 5 and ground. So that's your power input. The second one is the red and green LED output. So that's your indication when you press the button and it tells you what region you're in. This is pretty much going off to the LED to give you that indication. The next one, this one here, is your reset in and reset out. So that detects when you press a reset button and it also sends the pulse out to reset the console when the pick chip does its magic. And the last one, this one here, is pretty much the video and the language selection. And they go off to the dip switches that are on the Mega Drive. Uh, and that's pretty much it. All I have to do now is get this wired in. I also have to program the pick chip and that's what's coming up next. I'm programming the pick chip. Okay, it's time to program this pick chip. As you can see, I have the pick in my EPROM programmer. I have the EPROM programmer software ready to go. First thing I need to do is select the device and it is a 16F. 630 and we'll select that and the first thing I like to do when I'm programming any chip whether it be an EEPROM or a PIC chip is just run a blank check yep and the device is blank um, it just makes sure that when I press the program button it starts programming because if the device is not blank it won't program it so I'm just saving myself a little bit of stress later on um, and yeah I'm ready to go, ready to program so I need to open up the X file and as you can see Mega Drive switch list pick 16F 630X and open that it's into X file that's right or memory that's ok I'm not really bothered about this bit so if I click ok as you can see the code has been loaded into the buffer this is the code that gets written to the device um, what I want to talk to you about now is the configuration. This piece of software will actually read the configuration and set the fuses for me. You can see they've all been set here. Your EPROM programmer may not do this. You may need to go in there manually and do this. I don't have to do that with this piece of software. It already reads them from the X file and sets them for me. So you may need to set them manually, I just want you to be aware of that but you can find that information in the readme of the switchless mod so I'm ready to go, all I need to do now is program this so I'm going to press program and program the device program successful and we're done, that's pretty much it all I have to do now is just cover my backside by doing a verify so I'm just gonna verify the code equals the code that's in the buffer yeah I'm just covering my backside and as you can see verify successful so we're pretty much done I can get on with the rest of the mod now first things first need to disable the old reset so I can wire in the new reset and the sense button sense switch and I need to cut this trace here 
just above this uh, pull down resistor. I don't know how well this is going to come out on camera, but maybe you can see where I've just cut the trace going off to the reset button. What I need to do now is scrape away some of the solder mask from the reset line, solder a wire to it, also solder a wire to the reset button and that's taking care of the reset circuitry and as you can see I have the new reset and reset sense all soldered in these are the jumpers the language and the video mode jumpers for the VA4 Mega Drive you can see a capacitor on one of the jumpers that's not needed you can get rid of it so what I'm going to do now is cut these traces and then solder my wires to them and I'll let you have a look what that looks like afterwards. Traces have been cut and I've just prepped it for soldering. Have my wires all soldered in? I'll let you know what they are. Um, this one's power, 5 volts in ground, that powers the switch and circuit. This one is the Palantir C in language. This purple one is Palantir C, and the blue one is English Japanese. So they're all wired in. What I need to do now is take care of the LED that goes into the lid of the Mega Drive. I need to take the old one out and put the new multicolored one in so I'm going to crack on with that as you can see is the old LED what I've done is I've cut the legs down because they was actually sticking out quite a lot and I actually poked myself with them so I chopped them down a bit um, I need to get rid of the old LED and replace it with a new multicolored LED green and red so I'll get on with that new dual LED is in just need to hook it up to the chip now uh, get this all wired up and we can give it a test and I'm done as you can see switch this mods in just used a bit of hot snot just to secure that down that's not going anywhere and as you can see we're all wired in the only thing that's missing is the LEDs, the red and green dual LED but that will get connected when I put the lid back on so all I have to do now is bolt this together and we can give it a test and I'm done all bolted back together ready to give this system a check so let's power on and we've got a green LED which should be power um, but I'm not really bothered about that at the moment. What I want to test first is to see if the console will reset. So I'm going to press the reset button quick. And as you can see the console's reset. So the reset circuitry is working. Now we should be in power mode because we've got green LED. And I can tell straight away that we're in power mode because I can see black borders. And also the audio tempo is a bit slow, so we're definitely in power. Now I want to know if we're in English. Now this should come up toky if we're in English. And it does, so we're in PAL English, which is basically European mode at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is hold the reset button and we should cycle green, orange, red, green, orange. Now if I let go, this should be US. And I could tell we've gone into US mode because the pitch of the audio has changed. Now you can't see it, but I can see the black border's gone if I press start. Yep, the black border's gone, so we're in US. Now this should come up English also, and it does. So this is US mode. Now I'm gonna change it to 
Japanese for old reset will cycle through red, green, orange, red. If I let go, we should be in Japanese mode now. Obviously, the video mode is not going to change because that's still going to be NTSC. But if I reset the console. And um, we're still in NTSC by press start to get to the title screen. This should come up Juju Dansatsu. And as you can see, we're at Juju Dansatsu, so we're in Japanese mode. So yeah, this is working guys. 100 percent So I hope you like this video guys. If you liked it, subscribe, comment, all the usual stuff, and I'll catch you on the next one. Sweet. Switchless Mega Drive.